All right. Thank you for joining us for today's Super Bowl 55 media availability with Tampa Bay Buccaneers tight ends coach Rick Christoffel. Um, to ask a question, please use the raise hand function. Okay, we will take the first question from Lucas Weiss. Hey, Rick, thanks for taking the time. I'm just curious uh, how uh, how Anthony Eau Claire has, has grown this year and, and what does he bring to the team on and off the field? Lucas, he's a, he's the kind of guy that, that it'll fight. He's a, he's a strong type of guy, strong-willed. He... he uh, he knows he has to work a little bit harder than everybody else, um, but he is uh, uh, working his way into being that kind of guy in, in, a, in our offense where he's just a true tight end, um, a blocker, uh, learns every position. He knows every position on our offense um, as a tight end. So he's, he's invaluable when it comes to that part of the offense. And uh, he can do a lot of different things, but most of all, he's an in-line guy that, that helps us on, on, uh, on the uh, tight end uh, spectrum. Thank you. Next question will come from Zach Cox from NESN. Morning, Rick. Hey, uh, I was just wondering what your experience has been like working with Rob Gronkowski this year, what you were expecting uh, when he first came to you guys last offseason and how that kind of lined up with, with what you actually got from him this season? Well, you know, he, he you know what kind of football player he is by watching him on film and, and, and seeing the things that he did. The, the great thing about him, his, his outlook, his outlook on life is unbelievable. Um, he's, he's a great guy to be around. He's a great teammate. Uh, but a lot of people don't know when it comes to football, he's serious. He, he hates to lose. He wants to go out there and do the best he can every day. He works his tail off in practice. Uh, so the game is, and, and you can tell the game's a little bit easier for him. Um, but it, it's just an unbelievable kind of guy that uh, you get a chance to work with. He, he, so many things he brings uh, with him, you know, and, and probably his attitude as much as anything, Zach. I, that, that's as, as good as I've ever been around. If I could just quickly follow up, uh, he only has two catches in this postseason, but it seems like he has still been very involved as a blocker, how has his blocking been able to help you guys on offense? And how does that kind of separate himself from a lot of tight ends, especially nowadays, it seems like there are a lot of tight ends that are very kind of receiver focused or blocking focused. The fact that he can kind of do both. He can Zach. And that's, I think that was something that was lost with him, you know, coming from new England here that he can handle himself on the end of the line of scrimmage. And there, like you said, there's very few of those guys that can do that. Um, I think one of the reasons that, that, uh, you know, he hasn't gotten a lot of catches because of our, the way our scheme has gone and, and the guys that have been able to be become more involved. And, you know, we're very fortunate to have the receivers we have and, and, and the, you know, running backs we have. And, and Cam's had a pretty good playoff season, too. So I, I think it all it all feeds off of Gronk and, and, and those sort of things. And, and it helps us in, in our scheme. Next question will come from Anthony Kearney. Hi, Rick. Uh, pleased to, to meet you and talk with you. Uh, as a follow-up from the previous question, I'd like to know, how do you see the position of a tight end? Because we've been, you know, witnessing the, the tight end as a, a receiver, but it, it, he's very important as a blocker as well. And we're also witnessing the, the you know, Gronkowski playing with a selfish attitude in this, this offseason, this, this uh, postseason, sorry. Oh, it's, it's, you're exactly right. I, I think, uh, and it starts at an early age, you know, high school football, college football, a lot of, you're losing a lot of the original tight ends, what we call the Y position, where the guys are more anchored on the end of the line of scrimmage than their blockers. You don't see those guys as, many, as much anymore. And, and the reason being is because the offenses are more open up. They're throwing the ball more. They want guys that are, there are going to be mismatches in that particular position. But by being able to have a blocker on the end of the line of scrimmage, it, it helps with your running game. It helps with your play action game. And it also gives you an added plus with them being a mismatch on, on linebackers and, and maybe even safeties. So uh, 
that that's a good uh, that's a good uh, observation because it has changed a lot and it's hard to find those guys. It is really hard to find those guys, especially uh, now that the the offenses in high school and college are more open up and wide open. Next question will come from Josh Winfus from ESPN. Hey, Rick, you, you've known Bruce for, for a long time. How have you seen him taking the play calling responsibilities off his plate kind of affect his stress level? Oh, Josh, he, you know, he's a, it's helped him. I can tell you that. It's, it, and, and he'll tell you that. It's helped him a lot. And um, I think it's, it, he likes it because it's, he see he has seen Byron, all those guys, they, they have grown, you know, in, in the play call. And I guarantee you, he wouldn't have given up the play call if he didn't think that somebody could do it. And that's that's just his way. But um, being around him, I'm not going to say he's mellowed out because, you know, you've been around him. He hasn't mellowed out is for sure. But I think it's helped him as far as being more of a, of a head coach type of guy and, and seeing more things in the game and, and uh, especially in the office. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you. Next question will come from Chris Rinkel. Chris. Hey, Rick, uh, you've been in this game for a long time. I, I want to know, when you started as an assistant at Highlands High School in Fort Thomas, did you ever dream that a Super Bowl and being able to coach in this game was on the table? Chris, you know, when I first started, I wanted to be a high school coach all my life because I thought that's where you could, you know, when you first got in this business 40 something years ago, you, that you thought you can influence the young, uh, young uh, players and, and maybe help them grow and become. But as you get into it more and more, everybody says winning is important. Losing is what everybody hates to do. I mean, you, you hate losing more than you like winning and, and you, you want to keep winning and keep winning, and keep winning. And as things going on, I said, well, you know, I'm not going to go out of college. And then you get a chance to go to the next level when you go to the NFL. And, and then all of a sudden it's a hope is up your eyes, the whole different thing. And, and this is a dream. This is a dream that that's been on my plate a long, long time. And uh, fortunately I've been able to, uh, you know, uh, get to that point and, uh, uh, and it wouldn't happen if it wouldn't have been for a lot of a lot of things. You know, I'm very appreciative of Bruce, as, as you know. I mean, um, there's not a better guy to work for in this business. I'm telling you. And it, and I've been around a, a lot of guys and a lot of a lot of people. And and I've been fortunate family wise. My wife and uh, has moved all over the country, and and uh, she's done. You know, she's given up a lot of things. She's sacrificed a lot of things. So it's it's been a, a dream of of not just mine, but hers and and our family for a long, long time. For our next question, we'll go to Andrew Callahan. Hi, Coach. Um, I want to go back to Rob here for a minute. Just, you know, you spoke about his attitude and the things you've learned about him. How has he unlocked certain things for your offense where you might have expected them to be available, but the more you came to know him as a player, you were able to do X, Y, and Z, maybe second half of the season and obviously here in the playoffs? Well, Andrew, I think it's important to, you know, that, finding out about your players and without having OTAs and, you know, a lot of preseason, it was kind of tough. And I think the most important thing was that we saw some of the mismatches that it gave us on the offense versus the defense. And then along with the mismatches, how we were able to uh, use him on the end of the line of scrimmage and some of our schemes, our running schemes and our blocking schemes, which, which helped us. So now you've got, you got a guy that can get a mismatch, you got a mismatch in the secondary or on a linebacker, but you also got a guy on the end of the line of scrimmage who's able to block some of those guys that weigh, you know, those defensive ends that weigh, everybody thinks they weigh 250. Those guys weigh about 275, 280. So to handle those guys on the line of scrimmage and to see him do that, that's made a big difference for us. Just to follow up on that quick note, um, prior to the wild card game, did you guys going in there saying, hey, we're going to have multiple snaps with Rob is just going to have Chase Young one on one and we're going to be fine? Or <laughs> what, what were those conversations like? Well, you know, he 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 treasures those things. He, he looks forward to that. And uh, he looks looks when he when he looks at that, he, he thinks that's, you know, what he wants to do. And uh, it's been fun sitting around talking to him and, and seeing some of the things that he wants to do and how he does it. And and the other guy that's important in this equation is Tom. Tom Brady, you know, is just unbelievable as far as looking at those things and how getting Gronk and some of the other guys in the right position. And, and uh, uh, it's helped us tremendously, as you know. For our next question, we'll go to Michael McQuaid from the Irish NFL show. 
Hey, Rick, how's it going, man? Uh, Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski and guys like Mike Evans aside, how impressed have you been with this team in such a short period of time to go from the fifth seed to go to New Orleans, to go to Green Bay and reach the Super Bowl in, in the home city? Well, they're all professionals, and that's that's the most important thing. They know what, it's, what it takes to, to go in and work. I mean, the most important thing, and Bruce stresses this more, is the process, the preparation in, during the week. And to see those guys come in and work uh, – Sometimes in their, not their off days, but some of the days they come in and they look at film and they, and they go and they have to do certain things. But working from Wednesday to Friday, to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, their preparation is just unbelievable. And I think that's the most important thing. And that's what, that's what these guys all have done. They've, they've worked at it. They've, they've gone through the process and, they, and they've prepared. And I, um, you know, couldn't stress that enough. Incidentally, uh, I got a lot of ancestors that live in Ireland. Thanks, Rick. Congratulations, man. Uh, next question will be from Nora Princhiati. Hi, Coach. Um, Hi, just in terms of what you were talking about a little earlier about how uh, the kind of pipeline of tight ends has changed a bit over time, do you think, are you getting different types of athletes at the college level or the uh, high school level even interested in playing the position just because of the opportunities that they're seeing in the NFL being potentially more exciting, more pass catching, more guys succeeding in that way? Uh, there's no doubt about it, Norrin. You know, we were fortunate enough to have a guy like Darren Fells in Arizona who's playing with Houston now. And he was a college basketball player. And uh, he had some background playing football and his brother played for the Giants. But he's he's six seven, and he's about he came to us and he weighed about 280. So those kind of guys are becoming more and more prevalent. I think that the, the kind of, you know, you don't call them just basketball players, they're athletes. And it's a, a prime example was the guy out at Oakland. I mean, he, you know, he had a heck of a year. Kelsey is a, is a heck of an athlete. And even though Travis coming out of Trump coming out of high uh, college at Cincinnati was a pretty, pretty doggone good blocker. But uh, all these guys now, I think, see that this, this, all these offenses are wide open and that they're going to be mismatched. If they can, if they can block any at all, they're going to be mismatched on a linebacker or maybe even a strong safety. Uh, and, and that being at six, 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 seven, and they can run and be athletic. Uh, it, it becomes a, a, a definite plus for, for them and for the offense they're going into. Next question will be from John Crick from the Toronto Sun. Hello, John? can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yep. hi, John. Um, asking about Anthony Eau Claire. Uh, coming out of a Canadian university is really rare for a skill position player. And especially when tight ends, there really aren't tight ends in Canadian university football. Um, so I know he hasn't played a lot this year, but can you just explain a little bit of, about what he has, uh, what kind of skills he brings uh, as a blocker um, and as a pass catcher at this point in his career? Well, you know, I knew about Anthony when he was, at, uh, when he came out of the university in, in Canada, we had him on our radar and, and I evaluated him and thought he was an inline guy. Uh, what we call an inline guy, why? And he is a he is a blocker. That's what he he is. Um, he's going to be mismatched. You know, he's going to be one of those guys where he's not going to catch a lot of passes because uh, the way people play, he's going to be. It's not going to be much of a mismatch for him. But for him on the end of the line of scrimmage, he can handle his own against those big defensive ends and sometimes those tackles that weigh three hundred pounds. And that's what he brings to us. He brings that added little strength and in, 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 uh ability to block on the end of the line of scrimmage. One of the things that happened to Ant this year was that he, he had an injury and um, he hurt his, he hurt his leg a little bit and he was out for about three or four games. And it's, that was a tough injury. To, it's a tough injury to come back from. And he, you know, he's still, I think he's still working on that and getting it done. And I, I think that's, that's what he brings to us. Next question will be from Eric LeBlanc from RDS. Hi, Coach. Talking about Anthony Eau also, i uh, just like to know what kind of role can you play with your team this week, you know, preparing the Bucks for the, the big game? Well, he's going to, you know, it, it's one of those things where our game is such a numbers game going into the game that, you know, we don't know who's going to be up and who's going to be down. But the kind of role he plays, he's going to be the guy, like, I, like I've said before, is going to be in on the end of the line of scrimmage. He's going to be a blocking type of guy that's going to take – uh, be in short yardage and goal line situations and those sort of things for us. And, um, you know, that's that's the role he'll play. 
and uh, hopefully he, you know, that that'll continue and, and he'll keep getting better at it every week. Next question will be from Therese Paler from Yahoo Sports. Hey coach, how you doing today? Right, good. Hey, um, question for you. And I actually have a quick follow-up when you answer this one. What's it been like working with Gronk? You know, I think we all know that he's got some Hall of Fame bona fides, right? Just what's it been like working with this guy up close and personal? And again, I got a quick follow-up after this. Well, every day is a new day with him. I have he's just a he's just a joy to be around. He's a hard worker, he's a he's a pro. Um, he knows what he has to do. He comes into work, he does his job and he prepares. But the best thing about him is is the how his attitude. I mean, you would think a guy like that with a you know that Hall of Fame hanging over his head would be one of those guys, but he's not. He tries to, you know, he, I, I've never seen kids gravitate to anybody like they do. I'm talking <laughs> about little kids. They gravitate yeah. to him. And, you know, he enjoys it and has a lot of fun. And um, he, he's just one of those guys that, you you know, you, you love to be around. I mean, that it, it makes the game fun for me. It, it, it really does. Every day, you know, a lot of people don't like going in their jobs when it, this is, for me, it's, I wake up in the morning, I can't re get re uh, wait to get in a meeting with him and, and all my guys, I've been lucky. I, I've, I'm fortunate because, you know, you know, I got a bunch of guys that are, that are good players and, and, and really work hard at it. You know, Cam Braid is just, he's been well, pretty good in the last few games and uh, OJ was good and, you know, he got hurt and all those guys, but I, I, I've been fortunate. Coach, if you had to, if you had to build the perfect tight end, right? I'm curious how many of the traits from the peak of his powers, Rob Gronkowski, would you be picking, right? Like how many of his elite traits would you put in your greatest tight end of all time? I know it's tough, but just please yeah. humor me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough to say, you know, about the greatest tight end of all time, but I there's no way, I, there's all the things that he can do and all the things that he has done, uh, that's where you would start with. I mean, and, and, the, and like I said, the biggest part of him is his attitude. And I think people don't understand how he is as far as, you know, they see the high, happy go lucky, but he is a serious football player that wants to win. Um, like I said, hates to lose, wants to do things right. Um, but I would start with him and, and, and work with everything that he has given, you know, everything he's got, you know, he's, 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 that's where you would start. We'll take the next question from Joshua Allen with the Bucks report. Hey coach, how are we doing today? Good, Josh. How are you doing? You mentioned Cam Brates really came on the last couple of games. And um, has that been something that's been schematically drawn up or is that just Tom Brady finding the open man? And then can you elaborate on uh, his usage this season? Because, you know, Cam Brates one of the leading touchdown scorers in the past couple of years in the NFL. Um, and we're starting to see that come on in the playoffs. Can you just speak on that as well? Well, I think uh, to answer your question, I think uh, to start what you said, I think it's both. I think Tom finding him schematically, it's it's been that way, but – also finding the open guys and, and, and Cam gets, Cam gets a lot of, of, of uh, mismatches. I mean, he's, he's up on guys that, that, uh, you know, might be safeties or might be linebackers. And I, I think that's, that's important. I think the trust factor between Tom and Cam and, and is helped. And, uh, you know, you, when you get the ball thrown to you up here, you, you better catch it. And uh, Cam has been catching the ball and that, that makes a big difference for a quarterback. And uh, I think that trust factor has been built in, in uh, just, uh, the first part of your question, I think the biggest answer is that, that uh, Tom's finding the open guy and schematically there's been some things that, that have helped us in, in, in getting Cam in that position. We will take the next question from Stephanie Cataret. Hey coach, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, being from Quebec, um, I'm just interested into uh, Anthony Hauclair. Um I know he's not been dressed for the last few games during playoffs. Um, can you tell me about his contributions to the Titan room, to the team in general? His, his contributions are unbelievable. He, you know, the question was original. One of the original questions was, what does he do? He, he knows our offense in and out. Um, he doesn't, he, he works at it. He knows tight end, he knows F, he knows X, he knows Z, he knows all of our positions. And um, I think he understands what his role is as far as, you know, our team is. He's going to be that guy that's going to be the blocker on the end of the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, the last couple of weeks, last two or three weeks, we've been in a situation where we haven't needed that. And um, uh, so that's, that's what he does. And now 
his role has been doubled in the fact that he has got to do those things again against our defense during practice. And uh, he has done a great job of working and, and doing those sort of things and, and continues to do those things. We have coach for about five more minutes. Um, so we'll take the next question from Christopher, Christopher Holmes from NFL Chile. Hi coach, uh, thank you for your time. Um, I just wanted to know uh, how, how, how hard was it, was it for Rob Gronkowski to come back from retirement? You could really see like in week one, he was <laughs> really slow and, and rusty and how has it been this path uh, uh, to this uh, game? That's a good question. You know, you, you, that's very astute because he was, uh, I think it, it takes a while to get your body in shape. And, uh, you know, being off a year, you, you got to get back into the rhythm. You got to get back into the things that you, you, should, do, you should do and, and make you get your mind right mentally and, and how those sort of things. And I think as we went along during the season, um, he got a little bit more in shape. He got a little bit more mentally in shape. And I think his body, about the middle of the season, his body started saying, oh, we, we can do this again. And uh, I think that's where you saw him start to go. And, and we've done a pretty good job. We, we've been smarter with him in practice and, and doing some things and, and watching his reps and stuff like that. So well, we know we want a guy that's fresh on Sunday. And, uh, um, but I think he's now to the point, and, he, and I think he said it a few times that he, he might think about playing, you know, again. So that's, you know, I kind of like that. You know, I, I like to hear that. So hopefully – we can keep him at that point, and hopefully his Sunday he'll be, you know, he'll be strong and, and at the top of his game. Okay, we've got about three more minutes. We'll take the next question from Joey Knight from the Tampa Bay Times. Coach, can you hear me okay? Yes, Joey. I apologize if you've answered this already. You probably have, but Gronk has two postseason catches, but he may have never been more valuable than he's been in, in the playoffs. Can you just speak to his selflessness? Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the things about his attitude. You know, he, he's, like I said, he's a pro, he wants to win. He, he's, he does everything he's supposed to do. And, um, he wants to do, he's the greatest teammate. I mean, he's just as excited when somebody makes a, a, a catch for a touchdown or a, a run for a touchdown as he is when he does it. And I think that's what makes him so much fun to be around. He loves, he loves the game. He loves to go out there on Sundays and play and, uh, I think this is one of the few seasons, and I, and I might be wrong, that he's played the whole season. Um, so physically, you know, knock on wood, I hope he keeps doing that and uh, uh, we can keep him in that position and keep him mentally and physically ready to go. All right, we'll take the next question from Mark Tompkin from the Tampa Bay Times. Hey, Coach, uh, you talked a lot about Gronkowski. What about the tight end on the other side? As kind of an expert on tight ends, what does Kelsey do? Well, and, and maybe both from the. Uh, I, Travis Kelsey coming out, I, I evaluated as one of the top tight ends um, when he came out of his, his draft class. He he could do everything. Uh, when he came out of the University of Cincinnati, he could do everything. He could block, he could run, he could catch. And I think he's just raised his game to another level. And, and, and especially in the offense they're running, he's become more of a, a pass receiver. But he's, he's got so many mismatches on the field. That's that's what happens. And you got to do a great job of, and I know Todd will, of knowing where he is and what he's got, you know, what what his favorite routes are and stuff like that. And, you know, by the same token, they got a quarterback who can throw the ball over the yard too. So it makes a difference. But he's he's a heck of a football player. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's well on his way to the Hall of Fame too. Thank you, Coach Christopher. Um, that was the last question, and that, that wraps up our time for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you.